army would be sent from Syria, from the side of Syria, to fight this Muslim ruler. That would be Imam al-Mahdi, the new Khalifa of the Muslims. And that army would be sinked into the earth at a point at a place called Bayda. And that place would be between Makkah al-Mukarramah and Madina al-Munawwara. So we have looked a couple of ahadiths randomly and these ahadiths quote the signs of Imam al-Mahdi. So combining or summarizing these ahadiths, we would come to know that Imam al-Mahdi would be one whose name, number one, start with the signs, number one, Imam al-Mahdi would be one whose name would be on the name of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he must be Muhammad or Ahmad. All from the references I just quoted, all from the authentic ahadith I quoted. Number two, his father's name would be like the name of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's father. So we are looking for someone named Muhammad bin Abdullah. Or we are looking for someone Ahmad bin Abdul Hay. Or we are looking for someone Muhammad bin Abdul Hay. Or Ahmad bin Abdul Razak. We are looking for someone whose name would be name combination including Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's father's name would be similar. Or someone named Muhammad bin Abdul Karim. Number one, his name would be Muhammad. His father's name would be Abdullah or Abdul Karim or Abdul Hay or Abdul Razak. Number three, he would be from the lineage of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He would be a Sayyid or Hashmi. It's not necessary that every Sayyid or Hashmi recognize themselves as Sayyid or Hashmi. Many of them don't even know that they are Hashmi or Sayyid. But still, this is a sign we would have to find this out one way or another when the time comes. Muhammad, his name would be Muhammad. His father's name would be in the name of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's father's name. Muhammad bin Abdullah or Muhammad bin Abdul Karim. Number three, he would be from the lineage of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number four, he would be Hassani by his lineage and not Husseini by his lineage. He would be from the children of Hazrat Hassan radiallahu ta'ala He would be from the lineage of Hazrat Ali. He would be from the lineage of Hazrat Fatima. He would be from the lineage of Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he would be from the lineage of Hazrat Hassan radiallahu ta'ala and not from the lineage of Hazrat Hussein radiallahu ta'ala according to the hadith I just quoted. So number four, his nose would be tall. And when Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells something to happen, it happens precisely. So you won't have to identify his nose that is it tall or not. It would be so tall that most probably the nose would be the first thing you would recognize on the face of Mahdi. That nose would be so tall, you would have to recognize the nose as the first thing on his face. And then his forehead would be broad. His hair cannot be like this or even like me even broader than this and his nose has to be tall as well so there are signs associated with the Mahdi as a person now coming to the signs that would make the Mahdi rise or make the Mahdi popular or be recognizable by the people and those signs are that the black banners or black visuals would rise from Khurasan side would come from Khurasan and then when the bay'ah is done an army would be sent to fight him and that army would be buried in the earth these two would be the signs when it would be very clear to the people that this person who went from Medina to Makkah and the, some people have taken oath on his end is the Mahdi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yakunu ikhtalafun inda mawti khalifatin fayakhruju rajulun min ahli al-madina hariban ila makkah fayatihu an-nasu min ahli makkah fayakhrujuhu wa huwa karihun fayubayi'unahu bayna ar-rukni wal maqam yabath ilayhi ba'sun min ash-shami fayukhsafu bihim bil bayda'i bayna makkah wal madinati fa idha ra'ya an-nasu dhalika atahu abdal ash وعصائب أهل العراق فيبايعونه ثم ينشأ رجل من قريش أخواله كلب نبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم said that there would be a difference there would be a problem there would be a quarrel after the death of a king this is the hadith that some people quote and they have a difficulty in understanding that a person from the people or from the population of Medina would leave Medina and go towards Makkah and then some people from Makkah would come to him and then ask him to come out of his home and that person would dislike to lead the Muslims but the people 
people of Makkah would force him to take bayah and he would be sitting between Rukun and Muqam. He would basically be sitting between Hajrul Aswat and uh, Muqamun Ibrahim and those people would force him to take bayah from Muslims and after that an army would be sent from Syria, from the side of Syria to fight this Muslim ruler that would be Imam al-Mahdi, the new Khalifa of the Muslims and that army would be sinked into the earth at a point at a place called Bayda and that place would be between Makkah al mukarramah and Madina al Munawwara, and that would be a big sign of Imam al Mahdi and this hadith continues on saying that when people would see this situation that the army has been sinked into the earth the army has been buried into the earth by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then the best people of Syria would come over and take their bayah and show their allegiance to the same person, Imam al-Mahdi. Then, Imam al-Mahdi would be the one who would rule the Muslims according to the Sunnah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And after that, Islam would be established on the earth and he will rule the Muslims for seven years. So this is Hadith number 5456 of Mishkat al-Masabi with the reference of Abu Dawood. And according to this Hadith, Imam al-Mahdi would be a person from the people of Medina. When people would recognize him, he would run, he would escape from the people of Medina and he would end up in Makkah. And in Makkah, the Muslims would force him to take bayah from the Muslims.